What's up everyone, my name is Forsaken, and today we are going to discuss something interesting. Recently, the World Health Organization categorized gaming addiction as a mental health condition, which I have some reservations about. I mean, they're a medical institution, so they have the right to classify things as they see fit or whatever, but the whole thing feels kind of clickbaity to me. Initially, I came across an article on CNBC, and they stated that it's a pattern of persistent or reoccurring gaming behavior that becomes so extensive it takes precedence over other life interests. I don't particularly care for this article. It was fairly short. They were just trying to get something out just to say that they did. It's really vague because like you have to have a hierarchy of importance within all things in your life. For instance, if you have a child, you may have a pattern of behavior where your parenting takes precedence over other life interests, as it should. But the point remains. The article I found that I liked the most, which conveniently was the second article, and I didn't look for a third, so take that as you may, was from the LA Times. But I like how they worded it best. Out of the two, yeah, you know, whatever, you just, you'll see. It says that in the latest edition of the International Classification of Diseases released Monday, the United Nations Agency concluded that people whose jobs, educations, family, or social lives have been upended by video games probably meet the criteria for a new form of addiction called gaming disorder. It goes on to say that it should be of sufficient severity to result in significant impairment, it should be continuous or episodic and recurrent, normally evident over a period of at least 12 months. Now. The key term in this whole thing is addiction. Addiction is defined as the state of being enslaved to a habit or practice or to something that is psychologically or physically habit forming as narcotics to such an extent that its secession causes severe trauma. Now, logically, there are reasons for specific classifications for addictive behaviors. And that is so you know how to effectively treat these behaviors. For instance, you would not treat somebody that is addicted to heroin in the same manner that you would that someone who is addicted to gambling. Now there is a disease in Japan they call Hashikimori. And Hashikimori I think translates as locked in. Where people will spend spans of time as long as, you know, months to years, even decades locked inside of their room. And this is a disorder that is treated by forcefully making people interact with others, or say, pulling people away from the electronic devices to which they are addicted, putting them in nature, engaging them in other things that demonstrate it's okay to safely interact with other people. Now this disorder is more a phenomenon of the Japanese culture. It doesn't really have anything to do with video games specifically. I brought it up more as an example of things that can be done to deal with this addiction because none of the articles that I read really address that yeah the articles that I read all two of them whatever I'm lazy anyways the reason that I have an issue with it being called an addiction is because unfortunately I have a long history of dealing with people who are suffering from addictions I hesitate to even say suffering because I believe in free will. I think you are responsible for the choices that you make in life, and people that develop addictions more likely or not have made a lengthy series of bad choices that have led them to that position in their life. I've had friends and family who have both destroyed their lives, destroyed their family units, and have died. So where the word addiction may technically be correct for what they're describing, I feel that it has a certain severity which isn't applicable in most instances especially in situations where you have a psychological addiction. Like things like work, sugar, food, sex, pornography, exercise, television, danger if you're addicted to adrenaline, and apparently video games. I feel that there should be a distinct line drawn between a physical and a psychological addiction, mainly indicated by the effects of the withdrawal from your alleged addiction. For instance, if you have a physical addiction, typically it comes from some type of substance abuse, alcohol, narcotics, prescription drugs, what have you. And the withdrawal from these physical addictions can be extreme. I mean, you have things like nausea and diarrhea, 
but there are cases where the effects of the withdrawal from your addiction can actually cause death. The only instances of this I know come from alcoholism and opioid addiction. While withdrawal symptoms from a psychological addiction manifest more in things like depression and mood swings and things of that sort, you know, you aren't going to be committing fellatio in a dark alley to get one more round of your favorite MOBA game. Now, that is not to trivialize the effects of a psychological addiction. I know that's what I'm coming across as because I'm kind of being lighthearted about this whole thing and joking, but there are dire consequences to some of these cases. After only a cursory look of the internet, you can find pages upon pages of people who have either let their children die because they were too involved playing video games, and I mean, they aren't model fucking parents, they're monsters, they shouldn't have been parents to begin with, right? Or you have the other situation where you have people that die themselves playing video games either because they neglected to eat or they had some type of underlying medical condition. I don't necessarily know that these are indicative of the gaming addiction. That is not to say that games are free of manipulations. They are very specifically designed to promote addictive behavior. With the modern day marketing environment, every single product advertised for our consumption has been market tested and designed and manipulated very specifically to get us to consume it and to get us to continue consuming it. And video games over time have become a multi-billion dollar industry. And with this comes games as a service, not to mention the dreaded loot box. So games are designed to be addictive. They are laid out in such a way to keep you engaged as much as possible in order for you to invest money beyond your initial purchase. And realistically, gaming offers a lot of things that people are missing in everyday life, like achieving something after struggling through difficulty, or an incremental sense of accomplishment that accumulates towards the overarching goal over time. It can be very rewarding to people who are currently living unfulfilled lives. Interestingly, it says that the rates of depression, anxiety, and ADHD are very high among this population. So I feel that, again, this is an example that it's not really video games causing this. People who are suffering from something that would lead them to withdrawing from reality choose video games as their method to escape. The article continues. It says that multiple studies have found that substance addiction and behavioral addictions share much of the same brain circuitry. Imaging studies have found that the urge to play video games activates the same brain regions that light up when compulsive gamblers or those addicted to illicit drugs ponder the prospects of gambling or drug usage. And I would imagine that those same regions of the brain probably light up to anyone who has anything described as a addictive behavior. Some of the neural consequences may be the same too. A 2012 study suggests that the effects of excessive online gaming on working memory may be similar to those observed in patients addicted to drugs or alcohol. Consequently, some researchers assume that problematic gaming might share some of the same neurobiological mechanisms, such as pathological gambling and substance abuse. And once again, I would imagine, I say imagine because I'm too lazy to go looking through psychological studies to find this stuff out, but I would imagine that anyone who has a addictive behavior, regardless if it's sex, drugs, donkey shows, you know, whatever turns your crank, would have those very similar pathways in their brain reacting. It's about the reward system, the oxytocin that gets dumped into your brain for experiencing pleasure. And finally, I, I just have to say, as I have already said, I am a proponent of free will. I don't think the things that happen to us are preordained or that we cannot help the actions that we take in life. I think that we are all responsible for the choices that we make. And if gaming has to be so much of a presence in your life that it will prevent you from living a standard lifestyle, then why not build your life around it? It has become such a large community that you can find jobs, friends, and even significant others all who share your passion. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. I hope to see you next time.